Dear audience, dear participants, I'm pleased to welcome you to our webinar, Seismic Solutions for Cost-Effective Subsurface Exploration. My name is Knut Hirsch. I'm Director of Communications at DMT Group, and I am your moderator today. The main character is uh, Olaf Brenner. He's our presenter. Olaf is a seismic exploration expert, and he introduces various aspects of non-destructive 2D and 3D seismic exploration uh, and show how um, you can yield a much better picture of subsurface, subsurface structures with the support of DMT seismic solutions and thus reduce your individual exploration uh, risk. Uh, we have another colleague on board. It's Dr. Uh, Rüdiger Misiek. He's a deputy head of seismic exploration at DMT Group, and he will contribute uh, within the Q&A session towards the end of our webinar. Um, before we start, a few words about the formal aspects of this webinar. We act GDPR compliant. Accordingly, your personal data is protected, neither in the chat nor in the video recording of this webinar. Your data will be visible or accessible for others. The chat function within this webinar is our main communication channel with you. Um, and please put anything you would like to contribute into the chat. And you are invited and, and encouraged to ask questions via the chat. I will collect them via the chat and ask these questions on your behalf um, after the presentations as such. Uh, we provide you with a link to the recording and the PDF file of this presentation on request after the webinar. Please post your request into the chat uh, window as well. If you would like us to contact you, um, please post it into the chat as well. We get back to you shortly after the session. Um, if you experience any technical problem, please let me know um, via the chat window as well. Uh, I have some tips for you uh, on at hand to solve uh, most of the problems. Yeah. Okay, that's it so far. Uh, Olaf, please give us an overview about actual methodologies and seismic exploration, as well as some examples from the field. Yeah. Thank you, Knut, uh, for the introduction. Um, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. I hope everybody has a morning um, or good day, good afternoon. Um, so, welcome to my talk about uh, seismic expertise to minimize exploration risk and costs for mining. Um, as Knut already uh, said, I'm a project manager for seismic exploration at uh, DMT. I'm working for DMT now since uh, more than 20 years. And uh, so I've uh, done several, several uh, projects worldwide and uh, for geothermal energy as well as for mining, coal, salt, and other minerals uh, we have in the world. So what will I talk about uh, today? Um, first, I will... Uh, tell you what is recorded by Seismic. It's a short introduction about the principles of Seismic. Then I will uh, come to the comparison uh, about drilling 2D and 3D Seismics. What are the benefits of Seismics uh, compared to uh, drilling? And uh, what to consider when planning Seismic surveys and which phases do we have during a project? And finally, I will show some impressions from Seismic surveys we have done. So principles of the seismic service here, you can see, um, first of all, vibrating vehicles in the field, which drive along a geophone line and bring seismic signals into the subsurface there. The waves generated are reflected at the boundary layer here in the subsurface and then registered at the surface by the geophone here. Uh, this can be seen here very clearly in the schematic illustration different layers generate uh, different reflections and these uh, reflections will be received here at the geophones. Not only reflections are generated uh, by the source we have, but also different types of waves. Um, reflections here, for example, for example, reflected waves, um, 
surface waves and uh, the air sound. These wave types can be analyzed separately from each other and evaluated uh, accordingly. In uh, deeper explorations for reservoirs, usually only the reflections are analyzed. And with these reflections, we get uh, the, the following result. That's an example here, already interpreted. In this case, you can see the result of a layered deposit. Different layers can be identified. And if present here, in this case it is, um, fault can also be detected here as fault, you can see. For interpretation, the drilling results could then also be integrated here four boreholes integrated. And uh, yeah. here is a um, survey depth of up to 1,500 meters. You can see results up to this depth here. Um, but uh, in this case, the uh, target was a little bit uh, nearer to the surface uh, from 200 to about 1,000 meters. Here is another example of uh, salt dome exploration um, that has a size of two kilometer depth and uh, five kilometer um, to the side. Um, inside the salt dome, however, it's not possible to dissolve many structures. Uh, this is because there's uh, usually hardly any reflectivity within the salt structure. Sometimes you can see some here in this uh, Salt dome, it's uh, possible. And uh, furthermore, um, the salt forms are very strong reflectors, so that most of the energy is reflected and cannot get into the salt dome. But you can see the structures uh, beneath the uh, salt dome very clear here. So now let's come uh, to the comparison of boreholes, 2D and 3D seismic. Most of the exploration is still done by drilling. And uh, depending on the number of boreholes, with which of course the costs increase, you get a more or less good image of the subsurface. Nevertheless, it always remains with punctual or singular results between which interpolation is necessary. You do not know what exactly know what is here between the boreholes, especially the faults or are difficult uh, or impossible to find. Um, yeah. So it's looking at this picture, it's difficult to say what is really behind uh, this image. Now looking at uh, 2D seismic, uh, results of the 2D seismic and 3D seismics. At first the 2D, that uh, gives uh, only partial information, um, depending on, the, of course, depending on the number and the length of the lines. Sometimes you can already imagine what is uh, behind this uh, picture. And now looking at uh, 3D, you see the complete image <clears throat> and uh, uh, no interpolation is any more necessary. Um, this picture you can see here now has a poor resolution more or less poor resolution. Um, for example, if you want to uh, detect this uh, thatch of hair here crossing the face, um, and you want to identify this fault more or less, a little bit uh, better, then uh, you need a higher coverage. And finally, you can get uh, this picture. Of course, a higher coverage uh, includes higher costs. You need more uh, receiver stations, more source point stations, and uh, more more lines. Um, however, there are also pitfalls possible with uh, 2D seismics, which can also only be prevented with the help of 3D seismics. Um, for an overview of the existing geology, 2D seismics is optimal. But uh, however, if uh, complex fault systems are present in the subsurface, faults interpretations may occur. Let's say in this case, in this example, you can see how you would interpret faults based on the 2D seismic alone. Um, with the help of a 3D seismic, it can be seen here that uh, what were actually three faults become only two and uh, they're connected. 
with each other. Looking at the costs, um, so um, do not be confused by the annual figures. The figures are from 1991 to 96, because uh, during this time, the development in the seismic measurement technology has made a very big step by the computer development. And uh, before 1991, 1990, the exploration was uh, done almost exclusively by uh, drillings. What you can see here clearly is uh, that uh, with the increase in the use of 3D or seismic generally, um, 2D seismics included, the costs have dropped significantly. Um, here's a, here are the costs for the finding in uh, dollars per million barrel oil equivalent. Um, and it's uh, dropped from $8 down to $1 more or less. Um, on the other hand, the resources found have increased uh, clearly. Um, uh, more resources were found in the world. Um, here's an example. I would like to show you this, uh, how different the costs can be with different exploration methods. We have a hypothetical coal field with a size of about 100 square kilometers and an exploration depth of 500 meters. Um, the estimation is uh, to drill one borehole per square kilometer, then we will have uh, an exploration depth around about 55 kilometer of drilling. And uh, with a, an assumption of $200 per uh, meter drill hole, we'll have total cost of $11 million needed for the exploration of this uh, um, coal field. Now, using uh, 2D seismic would uh, reduce the uh, drilling program down to 10, 10 uh, drill holes. That will be only cost of $1 million uh, for the uh, drilling. And on the other hand, if we uh, plan with $20,000 per kilometer for 2D seismic, we will have costs of $2 million for the exploration uh, seismic zone. So total costs of uh, $3 million US dollars uh, compared to $11 million uh, to, to uh, using uh, drilling only. It's, it's a really high number. Um, comparing now with a 3D seismic, uh, the cost estimation is um, $60,000 uh, per square kilometer. Total, in total, we will have $6 million uh, cost for the exploration, 3D exploration seismics. And uh, additional uh, small drilling program using 10 drill holes uh, will have additional cost of 1 million. Um, then we will still have 7 million compared to 11 million, and we have saved 4 million dollars. Uh, so the seismic is much cheaper and has a better resolution of the coal deposit. So, uh, short summary between. The drilling gives, uh, of course, a singular result of the underground and a direct result. Um, with a higher result, resolution, you need more drilling points and uh, that's uh, resulting in higher costs. The seismic yields only uh, indirect results, but it's non-destructive. Uh, uh, the surface is not destroyed. Um, and uh, depending on the size, oh, going to here, um, depending on the size of a 2D seismic uh, survey, you get only an overview or uh, more details. And uh, with a 3D seismic survey, you can uh, look into details, uh, maybe from a 2D survey uh, with an overview, you can uh, uh, focus on uh, one part of your survey area. Um, of course, the number of uh, drill holes can then reduce by the seismic results. Um, uh, drilling is nevertheless still important for calibration of the seismic surveys uh, um, so that you can combine um, the drilling results and the seismic survey. With the results of the seismic survey, a detailed 
drill path planning is uh, possible as well. So if you want to search uh, by drilling for your reservoir, then uh, you know where to go. So which phases do we have during a seismic campaign? Um, we start with the preparation phase, then we will have a survey phase, and uh, finally the interpretation phase where we will uh, produce uh, the final result. During the preparation phase, important is uh, public relations and uh, permitting. Um, public uh, the, the, the um, planning is, of course, that we have to look at the field, we prepare maps, uh, look for the survey program and uh, define the parameters how to uh, do the seismic survey. The time schedule uh, is, is defined so that uh, um, with all um, departments uh, can be uh, spoken and uh, the government is informed and all permits uh, will be given. Permits not only by the government are important, permits by the landowners as well, because seismic surveys are crossing the fields and uh, going on roads. Um, the fields must be harvested. Maybe we have uh, um, uh, natural protection and natural protection areas or something else. Um, here's an example of the planning of a 2D seismic survey. We try to plan the seismic surveys along lines. That's the theory here. And in the field, it looks a little bit uh, uh, different. Um, we just try to follow some roads, or maybe we have uh, some other obstacles we have to uh, uh, hide and uh, so that we do not have uh, these straight lines. In this case, we have uh, some perpendicular lines as well. Uh, that's uh, on the uh, 2D seismic survey and looking now at the 3D. Um, on the right side, you can see already a result. So that's a seismic uh, cube. And uh, in details, you can see here the blue lines are the receiver lines and uh, the red lines are the source lines. and uh, it's not always uh, possible to go straight ahead. We have maybe some, some buildings here or frosted areas where we cannot cross um, these parts. What will we get? Oh, uh, next step is uh, the survey phase. Um, where the field work starts uh, during this uh, um, Survey phase, we have, uh, again, different parts. We have uh, the recording stations in the field. This one is a wireless station. Then we have, uh, in this case, fibro seismics, or the, the source part, and uh, then the recording truck, the quality control, and the communication center um, will organize the, the complete field work, field work. Additionally, during the survey, close to the source, we will uh, do some measurements of the ground, ground motion vibrations. That is uh, important when you are close to buildings, um, not to destroy or to damage the buildings. Um, additionally, we uh, have to do a survey in the survey, that's a so-called refraction line survey uh, for the low velocity layers. The reflection survey normally looks uh, to depth more than uh, 50 to 100 meters and for the processing we finally need uh, the information of the first 50 meters and for that purpose we have to do a reflection line survey additionally next step after the um, data acquisition will be the processing for DMT, it will be done uh, by our subsidiary, DMT Petrologic. It's a specialized office only doing uh, seismic data processing. <clears throat> and uh, what they are doing is uh, from the raw data um, acquired in the field, 
they, in this case, uh, create a time depth section or the, the final result, it's a processed result. You can see it here in a better image. In this case, down to two kilometer um, depth. Uh, you already can see the structures here and uh, some faultings can be interpreted. With uh, these interpreted uh, data, we have to do uh, an interpretation of the data. In this case, it's an interpretation of a 2D seismic. Uh, several lines were combined and uh, you can uh, see here very good uh, the different layers uh, combined on each line. And additionally, we see some uh, drill holes included and uh, the seismic was calibrated to this uh, to these boreholes. On the other hand, uh, 3D seismic oops, cube, um, um, you will get a complete three-dimensional uh, result of the survey area. Here yeah, it's, uh, it's an area of four kilometer by 20 kilometers with two kilometer depth resolution. And here you can see as well different uh, layers um, you, are, you can explore and uh, Additionally, of course, the faulting can be, can be interpreted here. Um, with this uh, 3D cube you have acquired and uh, processed, you can do a structural interpretation with complex uh, settings. Um, there's a generation of fault pillars or fault polygons uh, possible and uh, as well, generation of 3D surfaces for the for each uh, layer possible, and uh, so you know exactly the structure of your deposit in the underground. So so far to the um, steps of the seismic uh, data acquisition and uh, processing, including interpretation. Um, now I'll come to some more impressions. Um, DMT offers tailor-made solutions for onshore services uh, that's in uh, rural or urbanized areas uh, or even in transition zones for, uh, of rivers or lakes. Um, everything is possible. Um, we can offer different and numerous Equipment with uh, which we can meet almost all customer requirements. It's starting with one component geophones up to three components for uh, geophones, even 2D seismic surveys, 3D or 4D seismic surveys, so uh, over a longer time. For that purpose, we have more than 40,000 channels of uh, auto size wireless channels and uh, about 20,000 SSL channels cable and wireless, uh, and for higher resolution, we uh, prefer the Summit X1. It's uh, 1,000 channels. Um, uh, you can see some, some pictures here, that's Summit X1. Here's uh, a line laid out, and some uh, geophones at a uh, wireless station. In this part, it's a uh, transition uh, zone, laid out some marsh phones. Also on the source side, we can offer all in the seismic established sources, started with vibrators, explosives, different uh, rate drop sources here, uh, even it's uh, pack and pack, Mjolnir or uh, EWG3. And uh, for the transition transition zone, we are using, uh, we can use this uh, air gun source um, in the water. We have different uh, vibrator sources, uh, a small one here, this uh, red and white one, and uh, up to bigger ones, the AHV4 vibrators with uh, different sizes for different exploration uh, depths. Now coming uh, to some uh, um, case histories in the, in the field. Um, here's one example of a 2D seismic survey in North Colombia for a coal reservoir. Um, 
can see here, North North Columbia is uh, can be difficult in uh, doing the survey in the field. So we need always some some guard in the field, um, but uh, that is all possible and uh, can all be done. And uh, here we got uh, very nice results with uh, different code layers, seeing some faults in the in the results as well. Another example from uh, northern, uh, northern Ethiopia in uh, Dalol. That was a survey for layered salt. Um, we had uh, done one or 10 kilometers of 2D seismic surveys. survey. Um, it took over six weeks to do the survey. And uh, we got a well, pretty nice uh, result with the uh, detection of the, the salt layer. Um, as well, here included the um, boreholes. It was only a small number of boreholes. Um, looking at the, the whole survey area, normally you would need uh, more than uh, 100 uh, boreholes in, in this area, but uh, they only uh, produced about uh, 10 to 15 boreholes. Okay, finally, I will come show you some impressions from our field surveys. Here you can see a test field for our wireless equipment. Um, the equipment is here checked for layout in the field. Um, starting with the topographical surveying, um, we're using uh, differential GPS methods, using uh, Leica systems for the surveying, and we uh, uh, achieve accuracies of a few centimeters in the field, so uh, very high accuracy. The receiver line um, in different areas. Uh, again, here the wireless station. Uh, we can uh, work in forest areas as well as here in that's uh, uh, in Mozambique in the, in the bush area or in the Alps as well. That is our recording truck, um, important for the quality control of the data and the vibrator or the, the source site, and as well it's uh, the communication center for the whole crew. That's uh, like a spider in the net sitting in the middle of the survey. The vibro source here in this case, um, we can use in different uh, areas as well. Um, that's normal rural area. Here again, a picture in uh, Mozambique. Um, and uh, as well in the Alps, with snow, it's possible. Um, these heavy vibrators will be brought to the field always with, a, with another truck because they are too slow to uh, drive by their own. Yeah. So far. Um, Coming to the summary and uh, all the conclusions. The seismic tools allow to image the geological situation of mineral deposits and details. Um, it always needs to be, of course, adapted to the uh, circumstances in the, in the area, depending on the obstacles we have, especially in urbanized areas, it's uh, difficult. You can only, only follow roads. Um, for the data processing interpretation, uh, um, you should use um, some boreholes, but uh, the total number of boreholes is uh, reduced, so the exploration costs are uh, decreased. Um, yeah, with the results of the seismic survey, you produce a higher evidence of the structural character of the deposit. Um, no interpolation between the boreholes is uh, necessary anymore. And uh, so finally, with uh, the seismic results, the geological image can be used for an optimized mine planning to reduce risks and already exploration costs. And uh, during uh, um, mining, um, the risks and the costs are reduced as well. <laughs> so, um, so far from my side, um, thank you for your attention. And uh, in Germany, we say uh, Glück auf.
So now I should be back with my voice. Thank you, Olaf. Uh, wonderful presentation. Now we start with our Q&A session and um, some questions already came in. Um, first one comes from Aled. He or she asked, hello, have you ever utilized size mix to determine overburden type of for open cast operations, soft, hard, competent, incompetent, overburden differentiation? Um, yeah, so um, we can uh, um, so we can do seismic service uh, more or less uh, completely independent from the overburden. Um, of course, if you have uh, soft uh, overburden, it's uh, a little bit more difficult. You need some more energy, um, but it's uh, still possible. Um, the, we have seen some pictures uh, from Mozambique uh, for, for a coal deposit. And in Mozambique, we had a soft uh, sand uh, layer at the top, sometimes up to 100 meters uh, thickness. And uh, it was still possible to get uh, the coal layers. OK. Um, thank you, Olaf. Um, are there any limitations to set up a seismic campaign, e.g., a targeted resource? A deposit, uh, geology, weather, whatever affects such a campaign. Uh, of course, uh, so the seismic surveys are always limited by the uh, physical uh, constraints. Um, uh, uh, you, it depends on the uh, target depth, of course. Uh, you need if you if you have a very deep target, you need more energy. On the other hand, uh, you are uh, losing some. Uh, resolution uh, in the depth. That's not uh, other possible. Um, at, uh, the, yeah, coming to closer to the surface, um, uh, sometimes in, in some areas uh, you have uh, maybe a basalt layer and this basalt layer can absorb more or less a complete energy and then it's difficult to, low, uh, to look below this uh, layer. So of course it's uh, depends on the on the geological uh, situation and uh, the physical parameters. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Karim asks, is DMT moved to new technologies including wireless with dense 3D and 4D acquisition with type of node sensors as well? Um, if you have new tech about low frequency frequency sources, uh, so we have uh, uh, wireless um, um, technology. Um, we have uh, we're using uh, our auto size system and as well the um, wing uh, cell system. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, these are nodes uh, in the field. Um, the wing system, for example, is uh, not only connected to geophones, uh, that's uh, already uh, surveyed with uh, accelerometers. Okay. And uh, on the source side, uh, low frequency sources, um, our vibrators uh, uh, can be used down to uh, one hertz, um, start frequency of one hertz. Um, we have already done it. Okay. Maybe I can add. So DMT is always looking for new technologies. So um, the development in, in the wireless systems, um, systems is rapid and we try to keep abreast. So we are in discussion with all the suppliers and uh, manufacturers, but the same holds as well for sources. So we are following up new routes actually for new vibrators with lower, even lower frequencies and more continuous spectrum uh, to, to meet all the requests of, of our clients. Okay. Uh, a question from Merdat. Does the processing chain of data from coal mine differs from the main steps of processing on deep pet petroleum exploration? Yeah. Um, uh, it depends on the geology, of course. 
um, um, looking for petroleum uh, or looking for coal, you, you will have always a different uh, geology. And uh, then you will have, of course, a variation. Um, but uh, the, the principal idea and, and uh, um, is, is more or less the same. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, another question came in from um, Mike. How fast can you start uh, seismic surveys in principle? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so uh, uh, I've uh, shown uh, on one slide uh, the prepara preparation phase is very important, uh, especially getting all the permits from uh, from the government and uh, the landowners. So the preparation, uh, it's, it's not possible to say today, OK, I will do a seismic survey uh, next week somewhere. Um, it, it's not possible. You have to talk to the government, to, to, uh, to the landowners, and uh, ask for the permits, um, especially the governments uh, need some time. Um, and uh, uh, sometimes it can uh, take six months to start with a survey. Additionally, you need uh, time for bringing the equipment to the service site. OK, thank you. Um, we have a question from Hardy here. Um, Hardy asks, can you please tell us if you go to inversions, especially we know that inversions works well with low frequency data? This is, uh, may I answer, this is seismic processing actually, which you, well, which you aim. Yeah. Uh, of course, um, Petrologic is doing as well inversion techniques. And uh, yes, you are right, you need the low frequency data as well so you need a board as a wide spectrum and this is why why more and more often we get the request even to record low frequency data this is why we start looking for mems which gives you the wide frequency spectrum data because they start recording from nearly zero hertz and uh, are open for very high frequencies as well so you have the here the, the you made the, the first steps actually to, to do seismic inversion. Seismic inversion on its own is just a special kind of processing which uh, our partner Petrologic supplies. Okay. Um, after finishing such a campaign, at when we can expect a, geolo a geological result after measurement? Ah, so it's, it's not in the way that we uh, acquire the data and next day we will have the results. Um, uh, depending on the survey site, it takes uh, some weeks or months uh, until we get the final result. So the processing of uh, 2D seismic survey of, for example, 100 kilometers uh, will take uh, three to four weeks and uh, interpretation, ge the geological interpretation will take as well again uh, four to five weeks until we get the final result. Okay, and another question from Peter. Let me check, just a second. Okay, can I already estimate the size of my deposit with a 2D seismic survey? Um, uh, it can be possible, but it's a uh, really not give a complete final uh, result. Um, we have done uh, already um, in, in Ethiopia um, such a survey, um, a 2D seismic survey, and we made an estimation of the um, deposit. But uh, for for um, exact result, you should do a 3D seismic survey. It's only an estimation, a mm -hmm. rough estimation. Yeah, but it's better one than just from from a few drillings. Okay. Yeah. Please, please keep that in mind. You have the drillings. If you do an estimation from that point, yeah, uh, that's poorer than you do a three, two D seismic, and even this is poorer than three D seismic. This is exactly what 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 Olaf uh, said before. Yeah. This talk. Absolutely. Okay. So I see no more. Questions 
unanswered so far. So thank you, Olaf. Thank you, Rüdiger, for your uh, kind introduction of this important subject to us, to the audience. Um, thank you, audience. was a pleasure to have you here virtually, and uh, we hope to get um, in touch soon uh, for the time being. Um, please give us a hint in the chat, if not already done, in the, um, if you would like to receive the presentation or the recordings. And uh, yeah, thank you so far and stay safe. Thank See you very much. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.